I'm sure we can agree that it's very dangerous now, <laughs> and you know people should be uh, understand by now that it's seriously dangerous, and they shouldn't really be using these technologies. We had the proof, the government proof, in 1976. All the research that ever needed doing was finished in 1976 and published in that document I gave you yesterday. Uh, all of the research was finished. We didn't need any more research. But as I said, the American government wanted to put this out to protect him, to really to make a profit. Uh, and they also wanted to protect the military because microwaves have an advantage over radio waves. Uh, radio waves won't go through walls and, and through houses and through people and trees. Uh, you need a big aerial up there somewhere. Microwaves will go through anything. And this is why they like microwaves. So the military want microwaves, the industry want microwaves, and the military and the industry persuaded the government to keep the lid on all of this and really lie, for a simple word, lie to the people. Deceive the people and lie to them saying it is safe when it's not. But by 1976, we knew everything. Uh, I was six years old. Yeah. OK. Uh, That's the year I married Linda. OK. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good year, actually. Yeah, yeah 76. <laughs> and, and we know that. And we know during the Cold War, because a part of my job in the Cold War was to question captured spies. And we knew then, because that was the time when new pulses were being tested to see what they could cause, how much damage they could cause, and people were being experimented on. And part of my job was to find out what they knew. So it, it was going on then. We knew the damage was being done then. And since then, it, it's been covered up. It's a cover-up, 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 cover-up. Yeah. When we talk about buildings in Denmark, we have this the biggest uh, publishing uh, company with magazines and newspapers and whatever. They have built this new thick, thick glass building with steel mm. constructions. And the microwaves will not go into that. So what have they done? They have put a huge antenna inside the building where more companies are, are connected to it. And then this guy, yeah. he called me and said, well, I would like to sell you a commercial. Well, I say, you are the biggest publishing company in Denmark, you should actually support me and give it for free. Because I say, I cannot afford paying all your uh, <laughs> wages and so on. And, and then he, I said, well, what are you calling from? Well, I'm calling from an iPhone, you know, these mm. smartphones. Yep. And that, I, I wanted to lead that to, he was calling from an iPhone, and I have been trying to tell people about the iPhone agenda or the the agenda really going on with these smartphones mm. because it's also about hooking people up and, and yep. getting connected all the time. Mm. And I want to ask you something after this I say now with the touching of this display. But the Apple Apple phone, iPhone, yeah. on the board of Apple in the United States, we have Mr. Al Gore. He's on the board. Al Gore. Since he came on the board with uh, with the Apple, it seems like the Apple computer has just skyrocketed. It's, it's one of the most successful companies in the world. And it seems like it has gone the same way as the CO2. It yeah. has become very popular. Yeah. Banks have now a CO2 account and you have to do everything about CO2 everywhere. And it's yeah. so rubbish. But it just shows that there's something pushing it all the way around. And it's, it's always, yeah, the bad things are always in, in the top, you can say. But the display, when we mm -hmm. talk about these smartphones mm -hmm. and iPads, mm -hmm. they are connected with their fingers all the time and they, they, what kind of impulses will come from the display? They have a, a 3D or 4D phone and they touch the display all the time. What will go through the Meridian system or whatever? You know, they are yeah. contact all the time <laughs> with the fingers. Yeah, well you will have, um, with anything like this, you will, you will have a, a, a very, very tiny electric current going through the body. Now, there's an interesting thing here, <clears throat> because when you have an electric current going through the body, 
it has to go through the body into the planet. Okay, so it goes to ground. The electric. In, in fact, in real physics, the current actually comes the other way. But but people say it goes through the body to ground. Um, now. The interesting thing here is when you have a current in the body going to ground, <clears throat> it takes the path of least resistance. <clears throat> Excuse me. It takes the path of least resistance. Now, the path of least resistance in the body, it only represents about 10% of all of the paths that go through the body. There is one, about 10% of the paths have least resistance and they take. It's a bit like the motorways but it's a very important 10% because it carries all of the hormones, all of the antibodies, all of the uh, chemicals that have to go around in the blood to keep the body moving. It's a bit like the motorways in the country. They carry virtually everything the country needs uh, and the side roads just do little bits so you have the electric current going through on these roads now what it's like if I came do you have an underground in Denmark just in the Copenhagen just a little one okay if I came to Copenhagen <clears throat> and went on the underground and I can't speak or read Danish so I have a map and it, it's like inside your body with the hormones, the antibodies, they have a, a, a map inside them and they know where to go because they have chemical and electrical signals. So they know where to go. So if you're in Copenhagen and you know where to go with your map, you get to the station and you can get off. But if I go to Copenhagen and I have the map, Supposing the map has been changed, some of the words or some of the letters have been rubbed out, uh, things don't match, I may get off or I may not get off. And that's what happens in the body. When you have the electric current going through, it affects the electrical signals which affect the chemical signals uh, of the hormones, the antibodies, the neurotransmitters, it affects those. So sometimes they will go where they have to go, sometimes they will miss. And that is what's happening. So if you have a long time with this happening, then the body will start to suffer. Initially the body will recover. But all the time you're having electric shocks, what you're doing is you're affecting the antibodies, the hormones, the neurotransmitters. You are affecting your body. I can, can I ask about when we, we have all these uh, rubber shoes and so on, many people today, they are not, they are so grounded because they, they walk on rubber all the time, will that have an effect too? Not really because, and it's the same symptom we get with cattle in fields. Uh, when you touch anything metal, like a door handle, uh, a door frame, a window, anything, then they will discharge through the body. We have the same thing with cattle in fields. When you put a transmitter on a farm, in fact the farmers found that the vet spills exceeded the money they got from the communications industry. Um, with cattle, uh, the charge builds up inside them and it's not unknown when the cattle are now leaving the field and they're all charged up. If their wet nose touches the metal gate, the current discharges through them and some of them just drop dead, literally drop dead. And there have been very, or the one touching the gate, if others are touching, the current will spread. But of, there was a very clever experiment in Bavaria where they found that cattle exposed to low level microwaves they gave less milk and so they moved the cattle away and they recovered they brought them back to where there was a transmitter they got sick again they moved them away they recovered now you know cattle 
don't sit in fields reading Scientific American and talking about electric currents. You know, they eat grass and they go moo and that's it. They don't know what's happening. So with cattle moving them, you can make them ill, you can make them better. You make them ill, you make them better. And it was written up. It's the same with, uh, same with people. Fre Freiburg appeal, the Freiburg appeal. Oh, the Freiburg. Yeah, they yeah. also said when, when the doctor said when the mm. people were moved to other vicinities, yeah. they got better. It's so easy yeah. actually. It takes six weeks. Yeah. Um, it's called long-term potentiation. It takes six weeks. Okay. Uh, especially from the brain. And, and it's easily thought of when you have these microwaves going in the brain, it, it, it's called um, entrainment. Uh, and it's easy to understand what's going on. Imagine you are bouncing on a trampoline at your own pace. Now imagine a 56 stone man jumps on the trampoline and bounces at his pace. You will have to bounce at his pace because he is bigger and stronger. That is what happens in the brain when the microwaves go in. Your brain waves have to match the microwaves. They are bigger and stronger. When the 56 man, stone man jumps off the trampoline, you will still carry on bouncing at his pace until you can slow down and then develop your own again. That is called long-term potentiation, and it can last up to six weeks. We know from studies a child making a two-minute phone call, the brain can take two hours to recover. Now, you imagine children in a school playground on the phone. They're not going to be able to learn properly for the whole of the afternoon or the whole of the morning, yeah. if their call is a few minutes. They're not going to be able to learn properly. And it's called long-term potentiation, and it can go on for six weeks.